Oh. All right. We've just learned police have begun evacuating all the residences in the area as well, the reporter said. As I said, very little information is being shared at this time, but according to eyewitness reports, the iconic lion statues at the library's entrance have been vandalized. The helicopter footage showed a close-up of the library's sprawling front steps. Once the camera refocused, everyone could see that the lion statues were absent from their perches. Instead, they could be seen standing right in front of the library's entrance, as if the beasts were guarding the front doors. For a split second, it almost looked like the statues were moving. Did you just see that? The reporter asked. It appears the statues are being manipulated somehow. The one on the right looks like it's growling at the approaching police. Oh my, the lion statue has just knocked the officer to the ground. The police are retreating. I've never seen anything like this. If I didn't know any better, I'd say we were witnessing magic. Connor went pale and looked at his friends in disbelief. Oh my God, he said. We've got to get to New York City. Leaving us with that cliffhanger is Chris Colfer, author Hello. of, most recently, The Land of Stories, Worlds Collide, available tomorrow. The sixth book in mm -hmm. the Land of Stories series mm -hmm. and the final story. And the final, yeah, the, the sixth and final book of the series. And is it definitely the final? Uh, for now. All right, leaving mm -hmm. a little bit of room there. Mm -hmm. but let's start with the origin story mm -hmm. of this series. This is something that you thought of as a child. Tell us how you came up with the idea. Uh, I was um, about seven or eight, um, and uh, my younger sister had been just diagnosed with um, a rare form of epilepsy, where she was having 50 seizures an hour. And um, as a way to, to kind of cope with what my family was going through, I started writing and uh, daydreaming about adventures that I'd rather be having than, than being stuck in, in uh, doctor's appointments with, with her and my, my parents. And that's really how, I, how, how the story came to me and uh, promised myself then that uh, if I ever had the chance to get it published one day that I, that I would. I'm Pamela Paul, editor mm -hmm. of the New York Times Book Review, and mm -hmm. I'm here with Chris Colfer. You mm -hmm. talked about the origins of the Land of Stories um, in 2011, I think, mm -hmm. when you um, were at the Book Expo America mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. New York City, and you had this great visual which you showed, which we mm -hmm. don't have today, but mm -hmm. you had drawn a map of this mm -hmm. entire world that mm -hmm. you created. Did that? Did you do that too when you were eight years old? Or I did. I was very, very um, visual when I was a kid. I would draw pictures of every character. I would uh, I'd go to my, my mom's computer and I would make maps and I'd make um, uh, a little, little illustrations on like Microsoft Paint of whatever castle looked like just just for my reference and uh, and it's really it's really cool because those are the exact images that made it into the book. And the book mm -hmm. is centered around many fairy tales. Mm -hmm. You have Grimm's fairy tales that get in there, Hans Christian Andersen, sort of mm -hmm. all those classic stories. Were you a big fan of fairy tales as a child? Huge fan, huge fan. Uh, my mom used to read fairy tales to me when I was when I was when I was much younger. Um, and uh, I'll never forget the tr her treasury of, of, of fairy tales that she would read to me had um, instead of illustrations, it had like photographs of dolls that were positioned in, in kind of creepy ways now that I think about it. But um, it really made the world seem so much more real to me just because it was, it was a photograph instead of an illustration. All right, speaking of reality, we are answering questions from your fans and readers on mm -hmm. Facebook. Jordan Goldberg asks, if you were told you could meet any character from the Land of Stories for 24 hours, who would you want to meet and why? Hmm. Um, probably, you know, I'd rather, I, I, I would really like to get a, get a, grab a pint with Mother Goose. Why I, Mother Goose? You know, she, even I don't know all about Mother Goose. I think that's why people like her so much is, is e even if I wrote 45 books just on her, uh, her whole story would never be told. She's a, a, a goose of mystery. She's a goose of mystery. She, she's been there, done it twice, seen it all a hundred times, and, uh, I, I love that you you just you, you never know what she what she was up to through history. And you have her as a babysitter, right, in the series originally. Yeah, well, she, she you you meet her in the second book, and uh, uh, she comes to babysit the twins because something's going on, and they don't know what's going on, but something's happened with their mother, and she comes to look after them, and uh, unfortunately, she has a little too much bubbly um, and falls asleep, and so they sneak off, and they get some information out of her too. One of the things I love about the series, and, and I think kids really relate to, is you sort of marry the very real world of children 
in here mm -hmm. in this world with the fantasticals mm -hmm. and it's sort of Steven Spielsbergian kind of mix. Well, and thank you. In, in mm -hmm. your uh, in books, you also make those those uh, real world situations very mm -hmm. contemporary mm -hmm. um, with issues that mm -hmm. that affect people. There's a single mother. Did you consciously do that? And were there issues that you sort of wanted to have reflected in that real world? It's funny. I, I think I had such a um, uh, quick upbringing, I'd say, as a kid, just because of what my own family was was dealing with, uh, that um, reality was never uh, sh shielded from me. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that kids would would prefer to read character about characters that had gone through their own fair dose of reality. Um, and I, I knew that that I really wanted them to be sympathetic. Um, and uh, so, rather than giving them like a, a sibling of a special needs, like I had, which which was my um, my, my, kind of my struggle was as, as a kid. Um, uh, uh, I, I gave them a, a father that passed away. Um, mm -hmm. But um, uh, and it's, it's it's interesting because the family started um, uh, uh, in, in the first book. The family started. You start off. And you meet them. They're having some financial issues because uh, the father has passed away. Now the mother has to support the family fully by herself. And um, although I never intended it to um, reflect the recession, um, it, it ended up being published right in the middle of the recession. So I, can't, I mean, I think every kid knew exactly what what, what that was like. And you sort of half followed the Disney formula of first you kill off the parents, you killed off one of the parents. Right, but I didn't kill off the mother. Right, right. right. So, so uh, <laughs> I did the exact opposite of Disney. <laughs> so, you know, you know, these are our kind of fractured fairy tales. Were you a mm -hmm. fan of that? Did you know that that was a thing when you started working on these stories as a child? No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I, I really wasn't um, influenced um, by, by previous, you know, fairy tale adaptions. I really was just writing what, um, what, what was in my imagination and... Uh, Really wrote the adventures that I wanted to have with, with, with those characters a, as a kid, and um, I think I kind of wrote it in in, in a ch children's language, and I think mm -hmm. that's maybe why uh, so many kids have responded to it. So when you first saw Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods, mm -hmm. were you like, "Oh my God, he's doing the same"? I think thing. I, I think I I might have. There are a couple. There are a couple things like uh, Into the Woods and Shrek where I thought I need to get a lawyer. Like they 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 hacked into my mom's computer and they read my my first uh, my first chapter of my book, and I was like eight at the time. Uh, but no, I, I think I think it's good. I, I I loved any kind of. I was obsessed with any kind of fairy tale anything because I love the characters so much so I was obsessed with Into the Woods I loved Shrek I loved um, the Tenth Kingdom miniseries I loved um, uh, oh gosh um, uh, uh, Mickey Mouse had this cartoon on at the time when I was a kid called like uh, House of Mouse and you'd see all the fairy tale characters mingling I love that so, yeah. Hannah Rabaton asks are any characters based off yourself uh, yes the, the twins for sure, are based on me. They represent the yin, yin and yang of, of my personality, um, and also the villains. I have to say, I think the villains are based on me, which I, I don't say publicly as much. Well, I'm going to make you say it publicly now okay. on Facebook at the New York Times. Yeah. Which is your favorite villain, and why does why oh does that gosh. villain reflect you? I I love the Enchantress in book mm -hmm. two because I just think she's so deliciously evil, um, I, and I do have a soft spot for the evil queen too. Um, I think what makes a good villain is not giving them a sympathetic backstory, but making you see yourself in, in the villain. I think that is the trait of a, of a good villain. Like when you find out what happened to them in their past and you realize, I would do the exact same thing. I would totally, you know, have my heart cut out of my chest and turned into stone, like <laughs> the evil queen. Or, or, you know, I would totally keep the souls of my ex-boyfriends in jars on my mantle. Like, like the Enchantress. All right, well, I know the answer to this question, which is a very happy one. This comes from Carrie Rowley Baker. Are mm -hmm. the books going to be a movie? They are, yes. They, they, and I, I've, I'm so glad I get to finally say, say that and, and talk about it. But yeah, 20th Century Fox just bought the film rights, and uh, so they're, they're going to be uh, turning them into films, and uh, I'm lucky enough to get to write and direct the first one. So what are your thoughts? What are your plans? Like, who are you most excited to cast and kind of recreate on film? I, I, I think I'm most excited for The Evil Queen, just because I, I think that's, if, if I was an actress, I would really want that role. Um, uh, and so I'm really excited to, 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 to work with um, whoever we end up casting. 
Um, one of the things I think also that um, I think you've noticed too in the stories, there are sort of certain Harry Potter parallels. I know you're a J.K. Mm -hmm. Rowling fan, mm -hmm. um, but the idea that that these twin characters, I don't think I'm revealing too much, mm -hmm. um, are sort of half fairy, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you have the wizards. Yeah. And, and one and of them's okay with it, the other is not okay with it. He does not want to be half fairy because he does not want his friends at school to call him fairy boy or anything. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And you also, I mean, did you, I'm assuming you bring in aspects of sort of teenage mm -hmm. or incipient teenage, tween age, yeah. middle school kind of life into the yeah. story. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, more so as they get older because um, uh, by, the, by the time the the, the sixth book um, comes along, they are um, uh, almost 16. So they grow up quite a bit. They, they, you, we meet them when they're 11, and then, and then from, so from 11 to 16, it's quite a, quite a jump in, in, anyone's, in anyone's life. And it, did you, do you sort of assume that your readers are aging as they go along, or did you try to kind of keep them within the wheelhouse of that middle grade reader? I, I, would, I would like to think. I, I, um, I grew up with the Harry Potter characters. I was always the exact age uh, that they were when the, when the books came out. and. Uh, uh, I, w I, w I, I hope kids grew up with these characters, too, because I, I know I, I got so much joy out of that. Okay, I'm going to read some more response and questions from Facebook Live. Erin Wester-Moss says, is there a certain artist or songs you listen to while writing? Yes. I, um, I, not, not a particular artist that I listen to, but I do listen to a lot of classical music, and I listen to a lot of um, uh, uh, film soundtracks, like to, to hear the score. I, I feel like they are... they put you in such a mood. So depending on what kind of tone you're writing, I think it's a really easy way to get there. Do you find it distracting if you listen to music with words while I you're do, writing? I do. Yes. I, end up, I, I can't do two things at once, so I end up writing like the words. I'm like, yeah, like I'll like start writing like super bass or something. And I'm like, wait, Red didn't say that. I got to delete that. So you, you're turning these into a movie, as we noted earlier, but already you've narrated the books yourself on audio. Mm -hmm. What was it like to give voice to these characters? Exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think audiobooks are probably the most tiresome project I've ever I've ever been part of because you literally, like, you're in a small room like this for eight hours a day just reading until your voice goes out. Um, so, and you're, 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 you're performing every character, you're, you're, you're doing all these crazy voices, and, and it was really, 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 uh, like I said, exhausting, but people really, really enjoyed them, so I have to keep doing them. And did you know what the voices would sound like? Did you, like, spend time kind of practicing and trying out different voices accents, for each character? Accents, I would try, because I, I try to read in a British accent for, for anyone that lives in the fairy tale world, which got really tough when you're going back and forth between uh, an American narration and um, the, the different voices. So my accents aren't great, but they're 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 you know, they're, they're fairly good. Uh, so I practice the accent, but uh, uh, like when it came to like pitch and 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 cadence, I, I really just I just like mimic the voice that's been inside my head for so long. I'm mean, like, did you do like a Cockney accent for certain characters? For some, and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, <laughs> each one I try to do a little bit of a different uh, twist on. All right. Amy McCullough asks, what do you do in your rare downtime to take care of yourself and recharge? That's a very good question. Um, I really, I think being lazy is an art form. And I, and I, 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 try, to, I try to be as lazy as possible. I just, I sit, um, do a lot of sitting. I, I float in my pool. I um, watch TV. But, but I, you know, I, I hate, I hate resting. I know that sounds weird, but I really like, I, I get so much, enjoyment and, 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 and bliss out of working that I, I always like to to, 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 be, to be doing it constantly. Are you inspired by other children's books authors? You know, I don't read too many other children's books uh, uh, just because I don't want to be the creepy guy reading a kid's book on a plane or <laughs> anything like that. Uh, but um, I mean, I, just, I kind of just take it all from the, the joy that I got out, uh, out of when I was a kid reading, it, reading them. All right. Many of the people on Facebook are curious about how you got started. And Barbie Farouz asks, what do you say to kids who want a future in the arts? And Esme Verrieta, sorry, Verrieta mm -hmm. asks, um, yes, um, any advice you would give to anybody who wants to be an author? Well, I think it's, it's, it's never too late to start um, and, and start as early as you can because the, the longer you, you work at it, the the better you become, and the better your your um, your material becomes. Um, and the best thing about about any any kind any form of writing is you don't need anyone to do it. You can you can just do it by yourself. You don't need anyone's approval, and you don't you don't need someone's um, someone's permission. 
We're talking to Chris Colfer, who is the former star of Glee mm -hmm. and the author of, as of tomorrow, 13 books. Most recently, the one we're discussing today, Worlds mm -hmm. Collide, Worlds Collide. Mm -hmm. the last but installment of the world of stories. You didn't expect it to go on for six books, did you? No, I thought it would just be, be one book. Um, and uh, luckily, that did very well. So we, we I did a second one, and, and that did even better than the first. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do two more, and then it'll, it'll be four, but then I'll stop at four. Um, and then by the time I finished the third book, I was so sad that there's only one more book left. I thought, no, I, I, I got three more in me. And um, I'm very, very glad I made that decision because uh, originally the fourth book, the fifth book, and the sixth book were all just going to be one big, long book. Um, and I'm so glad I split them up into three because there's so much story there that I, I would have, wouldn't have done, done, done it uh, justice. And now you can do eight movies based on the sixth. And I can do eight, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I wonder about that. I wonder how many movies they'll end up being. How many of the stories did you actually have in your head from childhood since this was something you you, you thought of when you just were the seven. first book really um i um yeah i i, I always kind of knew where they would go and what might happen to them um in, in various stage rooms as, as a kid uh but i was i never really planned on writing a right like like write like like a full-fledged story for for any of it so i was just as surprised as the readers were jessica bento asks you do you see yourself doing more acting or writing in the future I don't know. I really, I really enjoy being behind the camera. Uh, a lot less pressure. Uh, you know, I don't have to worry about being puffy the next day. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I, I still, I don't know. I, 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 I go back and forth, but I think that's okay. I think, I think it's okay just to kind of follow, to go in the path that your heart is in at that moment. So I'm sure that'll that'll change, and I'll, I'll want to be acting again soon. All right. Well, we have in the inevitable follow up question from Caitlin Dillon, who says, "I know you'll mm -hmm. be directing the Land of Stories movies." Mm -hmm. She she went plural, just plural. so you know. Oh, thank you. Um, but Which will you <laughs> will you also be in the movie as well? Are you going to cast yourself in a role? I don't think so. I really? think I think it's a little self obsessed to uh, to write a book and then uh, direct it and, and write it and, and cast yourself in it. Uh, I know a lot of people want me to play Froggy in, in the book series, but um, I think we can find someone even better than, than, than me. But if you could play any role? Well, I could play any role. I'd love, I would love to play Mother Goose, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm ready to do the whole Tyler Perry thing yet. <laughs> well, since she's such a goose of mystery, maybe it'd be hard to get into the core of her character. Maybe it would, yeah. Um, Diana Marie says, you juggle so many projects, probably more than we know about, although mm -hmm. feel free to tell us here. <laughs> Along with a personal life, have you discovered a cure for sleep, and can you share it with us? No, my God, sleep is my, my worst enemy because I, I, I never get enough of it, and whenever I do get it, it's always very 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 abusive <laughs> um, but no I mean oh god I, I hope one day I can I can actually teach myself how to all right for kids who have not yet read the series give us a sense of the kind of story arc from the first mm -hmm. book the wishing mm -hmm. spell kind of up through mm -hmm. worlds collide well uh, the whole series is about a pair of twins named Connor and Alex uh, brother and sister um, and uh, one day they inherit a magical storybook from their from their grandmother and uh, it, it, it comes to life. It's magical and it sucks them into the fairy tale world. And uh, the first book and the second book and third book, they have adventures in, in the fairy tale world. And, and in the fourth book, they have adventures in classic literature. So they travel to worlds like Wonderland and Neverland and, and um, oh gosh, Sherwood Forest and Camelot. And, uh, and in the fifth book, they actually travel into, the, into their own stories, into Connor's short stories, his creative writing. Um, so they get to see characters that they actually invented come to life before their eyes. Um, and in the sixth book, which comes out tomorrow, uh, is all about all those worlds uh, colliding um, and um, emerging in, in the middle of New York City. And the New York Public Library also. The New York Public well. Library, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, if, it, if we do get to that movie, it's going to be a very expensive shoot. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide to end the story in New York? I really wanted a, a place in this world, uh, or the other world, as, it, as it's called in the series, uh, that represented it, that represented the, the, the world at its, at its fullest. Um, and I, I think New York City is one of the best cities in the world. Um, and uh, I couldn't quite think of another city that kind of captivates uh, you know, what, what this world is all about more, more so than New York. So you've gone everywhere from picture books up to YA, but mm -hmm. Smith K. Albuquerque asks, will you write adult books as well? You know, I've always written my reading level, uh, and so uh, that, that's, I, I'm quite comfortable in that. But, uh, you know, I, I love kids because kids, uh, they, they're very critical, but they're never critical um, in a malicious sense. 
they really when, when they're critical about something it's because they because they they care because they care about characters and they don't want to see them get hurt you know they 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 want they want to go on on more adventures with with you know with a b and c um uh but sometimes adults they don't really have that and and so i i really enjoy writing for kids for, for that reason I'm Pamela Paul, editor of the New York Times Book Review. I'm here with Chris Colfer, author of the Land of Story series and many other books. And I think kids are probably coming home from camp or having their like quiet indoor afternoon time now. So I hope you'll send in many questions on Facebook. Mm. Um, we have one here from Charity Grace Lynn. Mm. Which book cover is your favorite? Oh, gosh. Um... I don't know. I really kind of love this one. I really, I, I think it's so... This one, I mean, let me pull up close for you to see it. But um, I think it's just so adventurous, and and uh, it has it has characters from every single book on the cover. And um, I love that it's it's a very ethnically diverse cover too, which is something you unfortunately don't see much in in um, in a lot a lot of middle grade stuff. Um, so maybe maybe this one, I think. Is that Mother Goose that, that's uh, this is in flight? You got uh, Marina, the, the the witch, and you got Emeralda, the fairy, and you got. Lester, which is Mother Goose's um, Mother Goose's uh, sidekick, I guess, um, and then the twins, of course, riding him through New York City. Tara Cassidy mm -hmm. asks, "What characters would you want to meet if you were in?" And I love this T L O S, and she also has some heart emoticons, which I don't oh, know great. how to articulate, but there you <laughs> go. Which character would I want to meet? Ooh, um, I, I got to go back to Mother Goose. I just feel like she and I would would, would, would get along so well. And I know m one of my favorite things in the whole world is to listen to someone with good stories. And I just know she's got some great stories. All right. I'm going to ask a version, a variation on that question. Which character would you least want to meet? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, probably the Enchantress. I, d I don't think I'd want to cross paths with her. With her. Yeah, she she's a little much, I, I imagine. All right, another question here from Mikey Ahrens. Mm -hmm. Can you please give advice for someone feeling invisible and struggling to find purpose? Also, you are amazing with three exclamation points. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, well, I think it's really important to remember that purpose comes from within. It doesn't, it's not something that's granted to you and you don't need permission to have, to have a purpose. Um, and um, I, I would take all of those feelings that you're feeling now and I would use them to work towards a goal that, that will make you feel, feel less ins insignificant. But also remember, there's, there's some beauty that comes with being insignificant. Uh, it's, it's, you know, so, so in case you're headed down a path like I am, and enjoy the, enjoy the um, anonymity while, while, you, while you have it. <laughs> um, will you uh, tell us what lessons do you think? Did you find that you wanted to incorporate messages to kids with, through the stories, through the characters? I, yeah, yeah, I did. There, you know, I, I, I don't want a book that's, I, I never wanted to write a book that was preachy. Mm -hmm. um, I think you lose kids' interest right off the bat if, 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 if it becomes a, a, a story about morals and whatnot. So I, I try to use those lessons that I want to project onto them, I, I try to use that as, as more like character development and, and uh, and uh, things I, you know, I, I, I trick kids into in, into believing and and into uh, uh, understanding. All right, I'm going to get let a few more people mm -hmm. get in questions here for Chris Colfer, author of the Land of Story series mm -hmm. and other books. Kristen Curtis asks, "What do you enjoy most about doing a book tour, other than being on Facebook Live at the New York Times?" Oh, <laughs> uh, well, this, this is the, this is the peak. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I um, I love. Uh, I mean, there's nothing more rewarding than, than, than talking to people who've, who've, who've read your, your, your writing and, and, and enjoy it. There's, I mean, and there's nothing more exciting than kids asking you about uh, characters uh, like they're real people. I love that. All right. Another question here, a non-book question, but we'll allow it from Daisy Arthurs. What are your favorite movies to help cheer you up? Ooh, it's a very good question. I love Hook, Steven Spielberg's movie Hook with Robin Williams. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, I love De The Devil Wears Prada. Um, what else? I love Sister Act. That always puts me in a good mood. Um, and Chicago's a good one. Um, yeah, I think those, those are some Whoopi Goldberg ones. was one of your inspirations. Oh, I, I still want to be Whoopi Goldberg. She's still <laughs> she's still my hero. <laughs> still a gold. To have still in a mind. still a gold. To be, All right, gold. let's bring it back to your new book coming out tomorrow. Worlds collide. Book six of the Land of Stories series. If you were trying to persuade 
a child who um, has not read the series mm -hmm. to read the series because of where they're going to get in this mm -hmm. final book, mm -hmm. what would you say? Ooh, I'd say read The Land of Stories because it is a guaranteed adventure. Um, and uh, I think you're going to have a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun with it. All right, let's end. Can we? Can you read us one more little snippet from the series? Sure, sure. Give, give me a second. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, I'm going to let's find a good page While here. he's looking, I'm just going to give so that some of you know that you were heard here at the New York Times. Um, at uh, Facebook Live with Chris Colfer, Alexis Broadman asked if you were a character in the Land of Stories, who would you rather have as your sidekick, Brian or Cooper? Oh gosh, well, with, with Cooper, I think Cooper would would be a wonderful um, help and a wonderful like assistant to have, uh, whereas Brian might get a little power hungry and take over the whole the whole the whole ship. So. Uh, uh, I, maybe, maybe Cooper. I think Cooper would be more supportive. Brian would just pull a coup and take it all over. All right. We will not distract you now from finding the next bit to read. All right. We are here, here with Chris Colfer, and he is going to read from his new book, Out Tomorrow, Worlds Collide, which is the series finale of The Land of Stories. Unless all right. Here we go. Okay. Here's a little expert from the, from the prologue. Um, and this takes place when... Um, when Connor himself is, is in the future, when Connor is, is a best-selling author, um, and he's speaking to a, a, a crowd of, of people. Um, you've had plenty of opportunities to write for adults, but you've always sta stayed in the realm of middle grade. Why do you enjoy writing for children? I suppose I just like children more than I like adults, the author said with a shameless shrug. No matter how much the world evolves, the children of the world will never change. Every child is born with the same need for love, respect, and understanding. They're unified with the same fears, compassion, and convictions. They're tormented by an endless curiosity, a thirst for knowledge, and a desire for adventure. The greatest tragedy in life is how soon children get robbed of these qualities. We could accomplish great things if we held on to such a fresh point of view. Think about how wonderful this world could be if we all saw it through the eyes of a child. What a perfect way to end. Thanks. Chris yeah. Colfer, thank you so much. The new book is called, let's show it oh, to our Land of Stories, viewers. Worlds Collide. All right. Thank you for being well, thank here. Thank you.